is a Learfield presentation of the Seminole Sports Network. This is Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. 60 minutes of FSU basketball. Hamilton's Florida State basketball team on Tuesday night did something that no other has done thus far this season. They went into the JMA Wireless Dome and headed the Syracuse Orange, their first home loss of the entire campaign, and did so closing in impressive fashion, winning by the final of 85 to 69. Welcome, everybody, live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee, inside Seminole Basketball. My name is Jeff Colhane, and here, of course, with the head man himself, get a big round of applause for Leonard Hamilton, ladies and gentlemen. Coach, well, it's always a pleasure. We just got off the plane, it feels like, a couple hours ago. <laughs> well, actually, <clears throat> I think I got in bed about 4 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But, but that's it was, it was a pleasant ride home. There's no doubt about that. If you, if you go that far, you want to come away yeah. with a victory. I thought our guys uh, really, really executed well last night. I thought their defense was, was solid. Uh, we had some dips uh, in transition that I think we, get, we can improve in. I didn't see any areas uh, that I didn't feel that we can't work on to get better. We're still a team that's developing. We're still a team that, that has uh, some upside to still to develop. So uh, we, you always happen when you can win when you're still not quite as good as you think you can be as, the, as you move through the season. I know as, as we had been, have been talking about your team throughout the year, uh, you're, you're really focused on their, their energy, their enthusiasm, how connected they are, especially to start a basketball game. How did you feel about it uh, last night with the way your guys came out and the way they performed? Well, well I thought that um, we, didn't, we weren't quite as energized in the first half as we were in the second half. Uh, I, and I think that um, Syracuse had a little bit to do with that. They were, uh, they saw a weakness in, in our defensive system, and they were really attacking out of transition. Uh, we have to do a better job in getting back and letting them see bodies. Uh, but I thought that they really pushed the ball down our throat early in the game. Uh, and I thought we came back the second half, though we were a little more energized. Yeah, uh, and, and Coach, there's no question. That second half last night, uh, the way your group closed that basketball game, uh, you, you you bottle that one up and you, you show it at all, all clinics, wherever you're at, because that was really impressive stuff by your team over the last 10, 11 minutes or so. Well, it appears, <clears throat> at least according to the coach, that you know the quality of our depth uh, probably had a lot to do oh, yeah. with us being able to extend our lead late in the game. Um, I thought that we were consistent, and as the game went on, we tried to keep as many fresh bodies on the court as possible, and I thought that took its toll there toward the end and, and gave us a little opportunity to get some separation. Yeah, and as you look at how they were trying to get back into the game, uh, even to your point, with, with the way you wore them down all night long, I mean, the outside shot, had been falling for him the last couple of games. Last night, not so much. Just one for 14, the Orange, from behind the three-point line. And your guys were uh, flying around, making things happen along the perimeter all night. Well, we have a, a tremendous amount of respect for the ability to shoot those three-point shots. And I believe, uh, if you mentioned to me earlier, that they had, was it 20 or 22? 22 in those 22 three two. threes that they had, had made in the last two games. Uh, uh, with 12 in one game and 10 in another. Yes. So that means that they're capable of shooting the ball. And I thought our guys did a pretty good job of not letting them get in rhythm. The rhythm. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they contested shots pretty good, and uh, we closed out fairly, fairly, consistency, fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that really, really made a difference in their ability to knock down those threes. Yeah, Florida State defensively uh, last night, as we mentioned, one of 14 from three, Syracuse. That's a season low. And uh, the uh, seven percent uh, output, obviously a season low for Syracuse shooting a three-point shot. Uh, and uh, Florida State, the Knowles did an unbelievable job last night as the Orange missed their last ten threes of the game, and it uh, continued to to bolster that run at the end as shots were not going down uh, for the home team last night. Time now for our truest hero of the game, and there's obviously uh, a couple of different options here, but man, how about Jameer Watkins, coach, as he was just, uh, he was on one last night, wasn't he? Well, he was, fairly, he was consistent throughout the game from an offensive standpoint, and I thought he played excellent defense as well. Um, he's been a, a guy who figures out, he takes advantage of our ball movement and our ball reversals. Uh, he's a, he has the ability to get in those those gaps in the in the defense and finish. Uh, he, 
I'm, it's been a long time since we had someone lead us in scoring, rebounding, assists, and steals. Yeah. You know, he's he's really, really doing a good job for us. Yeah. Jameer Watkins, a career high, 27 points last night in the win over Syracuse, a double-double, tied a career high with 11 rebounds as well. His fourth career double-double in his college basketball career. Jameer Watkins, our truest hero of the game. Truest, the official retail bank of Florida State Athletics. Care, it's a total bank changer. See how at truest.com. He had mentioned to us in the uh, the post game, he had about uh, 19, 20 friends and family there at the game. Can we bring all those folks to Tallahassee this weekend for him, you think? What do you think, Coach? Now, who had that many? Jameer has said he had 19, 20 uh, friends and family last night. Really? Yes, really? yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's support, huh? <laughs> that's right. That's absolutely right. Because um, that's a little long, that's a long way now from yeah. where he lives. Uh, yeah. And the weather was not the best. It was know? not. It, it a lot of not. snow on the ground. <laughs> Oh, coming and going. You know, watch out for that ice when we were getting oh, off the bus. Oh, my goodness. You know, you know I've, I've had a few. Uh, I've, I've, I have failed <laughs> several times in the snow. <laughs> I, I, you get that, that rail, you got to hang on to that thing. Make sure that uh, you, you hold on tight. But an impressive, impressive performance last night by Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles. 85-69 final as the Knowles hand the Cuse their first home loss of this season. Just getting started on a Wednesday night. Live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee. Got a great show for you. Coming up a little bit later on, Jalen Ganey will stop by. The 6'10 big man out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Looking forward to chatting with him about uh, his campaign thus far and getting back and getting healthy with Leonard Hamilton's Florida State basketball team. And Florida State Athletics would like to thank Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee for their support of Florida State Hoops. Glory Days Tallahassee, the home of Inside Seminole Basketball. Just getting started on Wednesday night. Stay with us. More to come as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Last night for Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles on the road at the JMA Dome in Syracuse, New York, taking down the Orange 85-69, to winning for the third consecutive trip uh, at the, uh, the Dome up in Syracuse, New York, and doing so closing strong, a 28-9 run by the uh, Garnet and Gold to close out that game last night in route to that 85-69 win. That always makes it a lot more fun for the head coach, right? The stress level may be a little lower when the, the lead balloons in the last uh, five, six minutes, coach. Well, the truth is I, I needed that win to get that bad taste out of my <laughs> mouth from the from uh, Saturday. From Saturday. Yeah. So, uh, but that's part of coaching, you know, especially with this team. Uh, the, I told our guys after the end of the, after the game uh, that coaches probably are never really satisfied. Right. You know, yeah. and we're still pushing for, for perfection. Uh, and the good news was that we won the game, and I still think we got a tremendous amount of growth still coming. Yeah. And if we can just keep working hard, stay together, uh, uh, allow ourselves to get caught up in the system, uh, that we can continue to keep improving. And let's see what happens at the end of the year. What is this this group from a from a stamp from a from a coach's perspective? Because you've seen how far they've come from the start of the season. And even with some of the, the, the hiccups we had in December and what they've done here, flipping the, the, the calendar to 2024 at 6-2 and two in ACC play, second place in the ACC right now for your, for your basketball team. Um, as you mentioned, you're not playing your best brand. There's still plenty of teachable moments, yet you're winning games while you're going through this. How, how does that, how do, that, that opportunity as a coach, how do you describe that for, for yourself and your staff? Well, I have to be patient okay. as a coach and our staff. We, we, we're working hard with our guys, watching a lot of film, and uh, spending time teaching, mm -hmm. talking, and trying to develop that mindset that we know is important. But we, we're really basically an inexperienced team. Mm -hmm. You know, we, even though we have some older players, uh, Jalen Ganey, I mean, Jalen Worley, is the only guy who's been with us yeah. now for three years. Everyone else is a first or second year player. And so they're still learning and, and, and we no longer have an experienced bunch that's, that can't, that's been through our program as freshmen and sophomores. Right. Now they're juniors and seniors setting the table for the other freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. Right now, that's not the way it goes in college basketball these days. So we still are developing a unity, togetherness, a camaraderie, camaraderie. That, that 
that the unity that, they, that we think it takes in order for us to know exactly each person's strengths and weaknesses so we can take advantage of them and play well together. We're still growing in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, time now for What's on Tap. Brought to you by the official craft beer of Florida State Athletics, Oyster City Brewing Company. Check out the tap room on Gain Street and try out the uh, Florida State branded Legacy Lager. A great item for all Seminole fans out there. Coach, uh, we get back late last night into the early morning hours from uh, central New York. And now, of course, we're getting ready in the next couple of days for uh, another great opportunity with uh, North Carolina coming to town on Saturday afternoon. What are the, the next 48 hours or so like preparing for a great opponent, opponent for your team? Well, there's no doubt that Carolina has been playing the best basketball of any of the teams in the ACC. Uh, they, um, they're a team that's really, really clicking offensively and defensively. And it seems as though the defense, they've, they've hung their hat on their on their yeah. defense as of late, and they're one of the better defensive teams in the country. And so we got to do a really good job of moving the ball and making sure we make good decisions with the ball. And offensively, what can I say? They got a double-double machine yeah. uh, in the middle, and they have perimeter players that now are just playing lights out. So they're going to challenge us offensively and well, as well as defensively. Yep, Armando Baycott and R.J. Davis coming off of a career-high 36 points Monday night in the win over Wake Forest at the uh, Smith Center by the final of 85 to 64. Coach, as we've, we've talked about that finish, how, how do you, from your perspective, describe the blueprint of closing out a game in, in quality fashion, executing, handling the pressure like your guys did. They try to press us, and our guys did a great job of getting the ball over the timeline and taking care of it throughout the night and winning in the fashion that we did. Well, we went with a smaller lineup when they started really pressing us, putting we put uh, Jameer at the four position, if, and, and we put two-point guards on the floor, and, and we were able to handle that pressure, unlike w what we've done at several other times this year. We learned more about them and who, who uh, uh, handles certain things better. And, uh, and you see that Baba, for instance, I mean, he's sprinting the ball, pushing the ball down yeah. the court at six level. He's blocking shots. I think we, we just still coming together yeah. and uh, I thought that though in order to, to, to finish the game I thought we were a little fresher mm -hmm. I thought we had given our guys enough rotation that we were able to flex our muscles a little more during the closing parts of the game and be a little more energized because we of the quality of our depth yeah Knowles uh, again get it done in a big time way closing in dominant fashion a 28 to 9 run over the last 9 10 minutes of that game on Tuesday night at the JMA Dome against the Syracuse Orange. Hey, as a veteran-owned business, Carver's Discount Cleaners provides high-quality, dry-cleaning services at affordable prices. Visit one of the three Tallahassee locations for convenient same-day services. Don't get taken to the cleaners. Choose Carver's. Continuing to roll along live from Glory Days Grill here in Tallahassee, the Knowles are 6-2 and two in the ACC, ladies and gentlemen, and getting ready for a big one on Saturday afternoon with third-ranked North Carolina coming to town. We'll talk about that and more with this Florida State basketball team when we come back. You've got Inside Seminole Basketball live from Glory Days on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. There's nothing quite like enjoying a tasty brew while cheering on your team to victory. Especially when you're drinking the official craft beer of the Florida State Seminoles. Fan like a knoll this season with Oyster City Brewing Company, made by the water. Around here, there's an undeniable spirit. It's like it's always been there. You just feel it. It energizes. It connects. It grows at every intersection in its path. And when met with our passion to win, well, it can be downright powerful. At Scott & Wallace, it's this spirit that fuels us. Scott & Wallace, the official law firm of the Florida State Seminoles. Severe weather can change your life in an instant. Stay prepared with ABC 27 First to Know Weather, warning you first when the weather changes. Buy or lease any 2023 Infinity and you get Infinity of Tallahassee's Premium Care Program, covering all of these services for up to three years. Within 150 miles, we'll pick up and return your car for worry-free service. Real luxury. Infinityoftallahassee.com. 
Here at Ross Construction and Design, we specialize in commercial and residential remodels and renovations. With 26 years of experience, Ross Construction and Design is the builder you can trust to build your dream. Hi, I'm Craig Ross, state certified general contractor and owner of Ross Construction and Design. I will answer the phone, I will meet you for your first consultation, and I am on site to oversee your project from start to finish. Ross Construction and Design, striving to be the king of the construction jungle. Quincy and Havana are so special to me because I grew up in a small town. I relate with these people, and everyone is basically here for one another. I think that's one of the things that makes it just so rewarding and so comforting to know that you're that voice for that person's story. Dialed in through inside Seminole basketball with head coach. All right, we're back live at Glory Days Grill here in Tallahassee, having a great time. The Knowles are playing some great basketball right now as the Garden Gold 6 and 2 in ACC play. Winners of uh, six of their last seven games, seven of their last nine overall. And Coach Ham's squad uh, was impressive last night, handing Syracuse their first home loss of this regular season campaign, winning by the final of 85 to 69. Coach, you talked about how you utilize both your point guards late in the game and trying to hold off that Syracuse pressure. Kind of go into that rotation and how those guys, you got kind of different bodied guys there with Primo, Jalen Worley. I know Chandler Jackson's kind of moved to an off guard, but he can, he can handle it as well for you. How has that group been able maybe to relieve some of that stress, some of that pressure when teams trying to wrap it up when they're trying to come back and get back in games? Well, we, they are our two better defen defenders as well. And so sometimes... Uh, you, you utilize both of them at the same time to break pressure down from an offensive standpoint, but you also utilize their quickness and speed and their ability to contain the dribble and, and, and test shots. And, and, and regardless, uh, uh, Wally is, is an outstanding rebounder as well. Yeah. So we, we don't lose very much because he still is what you call a big guard. Yeah, no question about it. And Primo Spears, uh, the, the, the young man, has provided a different uh, energy boost for us when he's been out there with the ball in his hands. And, Coach, was that his most efficient game last night overall with the way he handled things? Six assists, season high, just one turnover, and, and made some big shots late for us down the stretch. Well, he's, much, he's very capable. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, 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 we're still trying to find ways to, to, to utilize his, his, his full skill set. And and he, he's he's high, highly he has a high basketball IQ. He's a tremendous defender, and and he's getting better within our system. Um, you know he's been the leading scorer on two of his team. I think he might have he might have scored over a thousand points already. Yeah, yes, he has. And so 1, what I'm saying so point. so <clears throat> we it's always good that right now he's coming in. Well, he's playing starters minutes. Yeah. But but he's coming in with that second unit. So now we get a. A, a clever ball handler that's capable of giving us some points. We like to. We've always tried to bring, have consistent offense throughout the game. Yeah. And sometimes it's, it's good having uh, an offensive guy or guys uh, in, with with your second unit. And then at the end of the game, you put you try to put your best guys together. Uh, you said it with with both Jalen and, and Primo, coach. The way those guys guard and and Jalen being that of a, of a bigger body guy at six seven. You switch one through five across the board. The way he handles himself, whether he's out guarded a Judah Mintz along the perimeter or if he's got a, a Malik Brown or somebody bigger underneath, he was down underneath and knocking the ball away and creating some big plays that led to some runouts, especially in that second half run for you. Well, that's what, how we've tried to implement our, our, our defensive schemes uh, to be somewhat versatile uh, where we can contain the dribble. Uh, people have done a very good job of setting the ball screen quickly with our with our five men, mm -hmm. so that their their guards can be a, a, attacking our, our big guys, and we that's an area where we got to get a little better, so we can contain the dribble with our big guys, where people don't feel like they have an advantage on us. Yeah, uh, your 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 guards are making it happen, and you've gotten great plays. You've been able to rotate so many guys through, whether it's at the the guard position or along your front line. Uh, Cameron Corrin, coach, has a sophomore, 10 points last night, five of seven from the field. Five rebounds in 19 minutes of action. Uh, he had an unbelievable game against Miami where he was perfect from the field, seven of seven overall. It had 16 points. Um, what excites you the most about the work he's put in and the strides that Cam's made for you as he missed some time as well coming off of that, uh, that toe injury earlier in the year? 
when, when he's a, a, a different type of postman, I guess you might say, mm -hmm. he has, he's probably more of a four than he is a five, but uh, that gives us a good look at that position. Um, setting ball screens, running the floor, uh, finishing around the basket. He's shooting a high percentage mm -hmm. there. Uh, he very seldom misses when he's in close. And he has the ability to step away from the basket a little bit and hit some jump shots as well. So his versatility has really been something that we've been able to utilize uh, you know, on offense and defense. He's put a lot of work in too, right? I mean, he's got in the gym, I know. Chuck uh, wrote a great story on uh, the amount of work that, that he's been able to get in and with Coach, uh, Coach Jones and Mike West as well, getting out and, and getting a bunch of shots up and trying to get that feel. Uh, to your point in the mid-range game, stepping away from the hoop. Well, his father was a very good basketball player at the University of Georgia, and I thought his, his father has helped instill a tremendous work ethic with him so that we, we're very pleased with his focus. And, and, and when everyone else goes home, we give him a day off, he finds a way to get in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of, uh, you mentioned his father, uh, Richard Corrin, played for Hugh Durham at the University of Georgia, who, of course, is a, a Florida State legend. We just had Coach Durham and many of the, the greats back uh, just this past weekend for a great Florida State basketball reunion over about a two, three-day period. Uh, I know that was a special time for you and for, yes. for your guys to see all, all the greats back representing. Well, we understand that we stand on some broad shoulders, guys who built the uh, tradition here at Florida State uh, of winning and successful basketball playing. And so we, we trying to uphold our end of the bargain. Hopefully we may, we, we didn't win the game over this weekend. And I think that might be the first time we've lost a game with them being in town. I uh, hope we don't, that we don't ever let that happen again. <laughs> yeah. I believe uh, Ron King back in attendance. He got uh, his home street back in Louisville named after him. Oh, Ron King way. It's wow. uh, it's called. That's well, a guy that could get a bucket or two back in the day. For the well, that says a lot about his character and his contribu the contribution that he's made to the community of, of Louisville. And, and he's somewhere living now in the same, close to the yeah. same vicinity where he grew up on that street. So uh, he was very proud of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it was a tremendous tribute yep. uh, to him. And that says a lot about who he is and what, what he has become. I can, uh, I can bet he's going to be uh, right behind the bench when we're there in about uh, 10 days or so. <laughs> you probably won't be able to miss him, Coach, with uh, his attire. He's always, he's always looking good, well, standing he, out. He always represents Florida State. That's <laughs> the, let's just say that. that that's <laughs> with a good some very bright colors. That's a good way to put it. <laughs> Absolutely right. He's the head coach, Leonard Hamilton. My name is Jeff Colhane. And the Knowles at 6 and 2 in ACC play. I went over Syracuse on Tuesday night, getting ready for number three North Carolina to come to town Saturday. That's a 2 p.m. tip inside the Tucker Center. Love to see you pack the tuck and make it one of the, uh, the wild environments in all of college basketball. Hey, Vistar Credit Union is here for all Knowles fans, ready to help you reach your financial goals and life goals by offering you a better way to bank. We also give back, making the communities we serve stronger. Do good, bank better. Vistar Credit Union, proud partner of Florida State Athletics. Visit ViStarCU.org. Go Knowles. We'll take a time out. We'll come back. More on the way with the head man, Leonard Hamilton, live from Glory Days here in Tallahassee, as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Thank you. Back to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Here again. All right, back in. We're ready to go. Coach, he's got a tonic water. He's feeling good. He's ready for a fan question from the crowd. He's warming it up over here to my left, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with the head man, Leonard Hamilton. I'm Jeff Colhane. The Knowles, 6-2 and two in ACC play. Big win over Syracuse last night. And got North Carolina coming to town. A 2 p.m. tip inside the Tucker Center. All right, let's, uh, let's go out to the crowd, uh, shall we? And can we give a big round of applause for my guy Chuck Walsh, everybody? Media Relations Director extraordinaire for Florida State Men's Basketball. He keeps me on the tracks, I can tell you that, ladies and gentlemen. And we have a question from the crowd tonight for Leonard Hamilton. Chuck, take it away, my okay, friend. We're, we're going to welcome in one of our most loyal people, not only here at the show, but in the tuck. <laughs> That's right. Hey, good evening, Coach and, and Jeff. How yeah. are you Right. See it. Coach, I wanted to ask, uh, you covered my first question about Primo there, but he brings a lot to the team. Happy to see him playing well. Uh, but I thought I'd ask about the assistants and the uh, individual strengths they bring uh, as a staff, but in particularly Coach Nickelberry in his first year. Well, what has happened with our assistants, we, we divide um, 
up, the, the, our opponents up. And so each coach is, prepar- is preparing, preparing the team for the game preparation. Mm-hmm. And so uh, there's no doubt that they, they try to catch every raindrop. <laughs> you know, we, uh, they do a very good job of analyzing uh, the strengths and weaknesses of our opponents, and they help prepare us during the week uh, for the next game. And so from a recruiting standpoint, they definitely do a very good job on the road evaluating talent. And, and they also have the responsibilities of th- at least about four or five players uh, apiece that they monitor their academic uh, uh, success so that we can make sure we continue to keep getting guys graduating at a high clip. So uh, Nick Berry uh, brings a northeast presence to our, to our team. Uh, most of us have spent most of our time in the, in the southern parts of the United States. And so bringing him in, he gives us a a, a lot of contacts in the Northeast that I'm sure that will help us uh, as we move forward trying to build our program back to where we, 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 we've always been. Mm-hmm. There we go. Chuck, that's good to go. Great, thank you. Good to go. There you go. Big round of applause. Thank you so much. Question from the crowd here tonight, live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. So Coach Nickelberry, was, he was good with that, uh, the temps we've had in uh, Syracuse and in, uh, in, uh, in South Bend. Is that what you're saying, Coach? He was That weather didn't bug him at all? The last couple of times on the road, he was. That's his element in the Northeast. Excuse me, I was. I was <laughs> taking a little tonic a water in there. I know we're we're getting the we're getting the juices flowing here in segment uh, four. No, no, he's done, he's done a good job. That was Coach Smith's preparation, mm-hmm. and he was animated and excited. And oh yeah, in, uh, Nickelberry's in one ear, he, uh, <laughs> Smith's in another ear, and, and Coach Jones in my face. So. Huh? <laughs> when, you, when you've got, you, you kind of have to kind of go into your own zone, right? When you've got, uh, you got assistants who are uh, as passionate as the ones that, uh, that you have working with the FBI. Well, day. when I was assistant coach, I, I really enjoyed the responsibility that my head coach gave me. Yeah. And I try to give as much uh, responsibility uh, to our assistants because that only prepares them. So uh, Nick Bear's already been a head coach, yeah. but it just keeps them involved and keeps them connected. And I think it's good. And, is healthy for our program. And San Jones is is someone that's been with you the entire way. I mean, you well, guys can finish each other's sentences, I feel no, like. No doubt about <laughs> it. I mean, he stands with me, been with me, what, 25, 26 years? Something like that? Uh, yeah, I think, I think you're so. <laughs> might coach. have been longer than that. It might be, yeah. <laughs> 27, 28. Yeah. <laughs> but he's been a loyal uh, friend mm-hmm. and assistant coach and uh, I don't know where we'd be without him. Somebody, uh, as you were starting out as a head coach, you were trying to identify someone that could be a great fundamentalist, right? And teach that and also the system that you were looking to run with your teams. Well, when we were looking for someone to fill that position, I specifically wanted a high school coach, somebody who had patience with young people, someone who had to teach and develop skills w- w- with their players and, and had a, 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 a certain level of success. Yeah. And he was winning state championships with in a private, small private school in the state. I, I was very impressed with that. Uh, he has tremendous character, great family man, uh, and he's been a, a, a tremendous lawyer, uh, uh, assistant to our program for the, a number of years. I'm very proud of him. I'll tell you uh, one thing about Stan Jones, too, Coach. High level of attention to detail. The guy knows when you put on a new pair of shoes, <laughs> even if he hasn't seen you in a week to two weeks. <laughs> well, he's no, locked in. He's a detailed guy. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. And for me, uh, he... His consistency uh, with how he's helped uh, in our program has given me a lot of freedom, you know, to leave the office, go on the road, do recruiting, right. and, and knowing that everything is going to be organized and taken well care of uh, back at home. So we work well, very well together. Yep. We have Jalen Ganey coming up here uh, in a moment, and here's a young man, Coach, that I'm really looking forward to talking to on the show tonight who has, has gone through – his, his adversity with the knee injury, he's worked his way back, still working his way back, trying to get as close to 100% healthy as possible. And you can see it, game by game, making great, great strides for you with the way he plays in your system. Well, the only thing concerning me about him, you always care for when you got players that are smarter than you. <laughs> and you, you, you got to make sure <laughs> that you get everything exactly right. Anybody who's ac- academic, all Ivy League, and graduated with, three degrees. He's working on the other one, I think, right now. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes you know, you got to make sure you, you try to 
Act like you know what you're talking about, just so they don't they don't embarrass you. <laughs> it, it is impressive. The young man who uh, spent time and uh, graduated from Brown, Ivy League, all Ivy League performer, uh, and has done amazing things uh, in the classroom and certainly on the court right now at Florida State University. How has his? And, and one of the things, you know, the first time we played North Carolina, we didn't have all our guys at that point in time. He was just getting back and just starting to kind of get in the mix. Uh, now we've we've come together even though we're not completely full overall but uh, to have that uh, that health and that progression uh, has to make you excited about the opportunity unfortunately he's probably about 70 yeah. percent you know and but he's given us tremendous effort uh, he blocks shots every time he goes in the game he gets a tip in a put back uh, or uh, catches a, a alley oop and a lob uh, he's developed to, to the point where he can contain the dribble guys have to shoot on uh, at the end. Uh, he's been a voice in the locker room of maturity for our team, and he has a lot to do with the, what little bit of success we, we, we've had up to this point. But I also think he's going to be very instrumental as we move through the remainder of the season. Has he told you the story about what his mom predicted, who, he, who, who, who he, she wanted him to play for? Well, uh, <clears throat> I, I love his mother. <laughs> there you that. go. There you go. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have him tell that story. It's a great one uh, here coming up uh, in a little bit. As Jalen Ganey will stop by our main table for a couple of segments. Hey, Florida Farm Bureau members, get free tickets to select FSU men's basketball games. Just visit myffbf.org to sign into your account. Then follow the prompts for attractions and sports and sporting events to get your two free tickets. Tickets offered on a first-come, first-served basis and are subject to availability. Not a Farm Bureau member. Visit myffbf.org and register to become a member today. Florida Farm Bureau Insurance, proud to support FSU Athletics. Jalen Ganey's up next, ladies and gentlemen, live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening to the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Here's some fun on a Wednesday night live from Glory Days Grill here in Tallahassee. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball. My and handing the orange their first loss at home here this season. One of the reasons why Florida State is off to a tremendous start in ACC play. The young man to my left. Can we get a big round of applause for Jalen Ganey, ladies and gentlemen, who is with us at our main table. We appreciate his time very much. Hey, what a win last night. Congratulations on that. How, what was that locker room celebration like? That would feel pretty good to beat a team like Syracuse on their home floor for the first time. They haven't had lost there all year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was great. Energy was amazing. After everyone, we just try to celebrate each other, celebrate what we've been doing. And just be happy for each other, all the stuff that we're accomplishing right now. I'll tell you what, uh, the way you guys closed that game last night, Jalen, was, was really, really impressive overall. Outscoring Syracuse 28-9 to in the final 10 minutes or so of that contest. When this group's locked in like that, I mean, how good, how good can this basketball team uh, be, you feel like, right now? That, that was a blueprint to it right there, it seemed. Uh, the sky's the limit. When we're locked in, we're playing great defense, and then... Like Coach Ham always says, defense translates to offense. So we win games with our defense, and that translates to our offense. Yeah, it, it definitely did. You're, you yourself, you are you're kind of starting to get back into the, into the mix a little bit, right? Getting mm -hmm. back into the rhythm uh, game by game. How would you describe how the, the, the game, game's maybe slowing down a little bit or how you're feeling within the system and, and how you play with your skill set overall with this group? I feel a lot more comfortable being able to run better, uh, getting more wind to me. Uh, game's coming back, like you said, a lot slower. Um, getting able to see things that I wasn't at first. Like when I first got back on the court, it felt like I was my first time playing basketball. Yeah. <laughs> it was so long. Yeah. But right now everything's going back steady, and I'm happy to play something. Else. How tough was that, Jalen? You went through the, the knee injury, and uh, you know it, it, you were fighting. You were you were you were working to come back. Obviously, that had to have been uh, really really hard at that time when you weren't able to play the game uh, you wanted to, especially coming down here in your first year and wanting to make an impact and get into the rhythm and, and be a part of it out there on the mm -hmm. floor. Yeah, it was rough. First practice to ACL. Oh, man. Been putting all that work in during the summer. It was, it was real rough for me physically and mentally. Uh, but with the help of my coaches, family, and God, I got through it. was able to pursue, pursue through it. Yeah. How about the training staff? How, how influential have, have those folks been for you? I know uh, Damon Edmond no longer here, but Chris Clapton's our new 
a uh, new guy who's doing a great job with mm -hmm. everybody right now. How, how, how big of a part of the team is that crew for everybody? It's really, really big. Uh, in the gym every day with them doing rehab, uh, treatments. Uh, they're always calling me, checking up on me, making sure I'm doing my stretches, all my exercises. So this is just a really good group. Even Damon, it, with him not being here, yeah. he calls me very frequently, makes sure I'm doing How my stuff. How about that? Yeah. That's great. That's fantastic stuff. Uh, this is a, a system, as Coach has talked about, where you're going to play 10, 11, sometimes 12 guys overall, and they just uh, I know that they want you to go out and just expend all energy over a two, three-minute, maybe four-minute uh, period of time. Um, when, that's, uh, when that's clicking on all cylinders, how, how would you describe – how it works, how you wear teams down, because it really looked like, Jalen, you guys wore down Syracuse in the last 10 minutes of the game last night. Yeah, when you, when you play, like you said, 11, 12 guys, you just keep a steady rotation. And every time you get that two minutes where you give all your energy, you get two minutes to rest, bring them back in, come back out. And other teams still playing the same six or seven guys, so they're just tired and tired because we bring in fresh bodies to wear them down every minute. Jalen Ganey was, uh, was a two-time Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year when he was at Brown. And uh, a, a guy that uh, defended and protected the rim with uh, his length and athleticism and uh, also 70% from the field during his time. That's the best in Ivy League history as he left uh, Brown University and now here doing a lot of those same things at Florida State. Take me through that defensive mindset, uh, what you want to impact when you get out there on the floor Coach mentioned a moment ago, you're, you're always near the rim, altering a shot, blocking a shot, getting a put back or a tip in. Kind of take me through when you get out there, what, uh, what's going through your mind and how you want to impact the game? Uh, firstly, just the guard, just, just be that defensive presence I've always been, was altering the shot, blocking the shot. And then on top of that, just being able to uh, contain the dribble on the you know, smaller guards. Uh, we work on that a lot of practice, and that's a big thing Coach emphasizes. It's a big thing, big thing I've been putting a lot of effort into. There you go. Hang out with us for one more segment. Oh, of course. Right, there you go. Jalen Ganey, ladies and gentlemen, as uh, he has made an impact as he has gotten back into the rotation with this Florida State basketball team. As we're continuing along here on a Wednesday night, live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. More with Jalen when we come back as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. dialed in through inside Seminole basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. And we're back, rolling along, glory days grill here in Tallahassee. Welcome back, Knowles fans, to inside Seminole basketball. My name is Jeff Colhane. Great to have Jalen Ganey here with us, Florida State big man, Greensboro, North Carolina native, and uh, a, a young man who has been fantastic in the classroom, as we we're talking about. Now, help me out here. Are you currently working on your second master's degree? Yeah, is, second is that master's. correct? Yeah, yeah. Second, I don't even know how to spell that, Jalen, <laughs> right now. That's, that's so impressive. Kind of just take me through um, your time at Brown and then obviously uh, the opportunity here at Florida State to, to be able to continue to pursue, pursue mm -hmm. so many great things with uh, your educational goals. Yeah, well, my mom, young age, is telling me that, you know, the classroom was the mo most important thing. So they just stuck with me. And so at Brown... Yeah, I really wanted to get that degree, so I, <laughs> <laughs> it was rough, but yeah, I got through it. Uh, I got my economics degree, and then here I came, and unfortunately tore my ACL, but that presented the opportunity for me to get another master's yeah. degree, so it worked out. Wow, very, very impressive stuff, working on a, a second master's degree uh, during your time here at Florida State University. Uh, now talk about growing up and getting into basketball and also about your family a mm -hmm. little bit. Because you and I talked in the summertime. I found it fascinating how you, you, you became uh, attracted and fell in love with the game of basketball and, and how it all came together. Yeah. All right. So I started playing basketball in uh, eighth grade. Didn't really play basketball at all. was real raw. And then some man at Walmart, uh, one of my old coaches, he was like, yeah, you're real tall. You're going to play basketball. <laughs> so my mom was like, okay, sure, might as well. Because I wasn't really doing anything other than just, uh, you know, studying and stuff. Yep. Uh, so after that, I kind of realized I was, you know, pretty decent. I wasn't, you know, sure. just getting out there was pretty decent. And so I kind of just stuck with it like that. And you, right when you started playing, right, in eighth grade, mm -hmm. you, you were right on varsity, weren't you? Yeah, I went to varsity. Right, right, right yep. away. Yep. And you hadn't played a much basketball before you literally picked up the ball, mm -hmm. right? And it's straight to varsity. As yeah. an eighth grader. Yeah. Now, you got to tell the story as well, as we teased it earlier, yeah. that your mom, back when you, was it when you were in eighth grade or, mm -hmm. or just around that time? I was, uh, probably eighth grade, ninth grade, yeah. around high school, yeah. Tell the story 
about when she first saw Leonard Hamilton on her television mm -hmm. screen? So like, yeah, so I was just getting into basketball, so my mom was too. Uh, she was watching, I forgot what game it was on the ACC Network, but she, she was watching Coach Ham. And for some reason, she just fell in love with him. She, she liked the way he coached, he was, he was smiling. You know, he rotated everybody, and he just had a lot of big, people, big guys that he utilized. And my mom always uh, said that uh, one of her sons was going to play for Florida State, and it turns out it came into fruition. How about that? Coach, the smile, Coach Ham, is what it was. Smile <laughs> on those sidelines. There you go. How about that? As uh, Jalen Ganey's mother uh, predicted it, yeah, that yeah. Uh, you'd, be, you'd be in Tallahassee. One of her sons would be in Tallahassee uh, playing college basketball for, for Leonard Hamilton. Mm -hmm. Well, we are uh, happy that you're here and excited to have you here as well. I do want to ask you one more thing. Yep. Uh, away from basketball, you are a young man. When you were growing up, you enjoyed fishing. Is oh, that yeah, right? Yeah, Big time yeah, fisherman. Yeah, fisherman. Take, yep. take, talk about that a little bit. Uh, me and my grandpa, we used to just find little pond. Well, I'm from the country called uh, Newton Grove. Real, real, real small place. Just nothing but look, like a little circle. Yeah. And so me and my grandpa, and my brother, used to go find just little lakes and ponds around, and just set up little fishing lines and just fish all day. Yeah. We, we, we ain't we ain't catch that much, but it was just a fun experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. That's great stuff. Got to spend your time with your grandfather and, and do that and mm -hmm. hang out. That's yeah. for sure. Well, you're you're a, a, a Greensboro, North Carolina. You're a North Carolina guy. Yep. Tar Heels are coming to the town here this weekend. Got to talk about that opportunity and, and how excited. We got some North Carolina guys on our team. Mm -hmm. A few guys that uh, yeah. know the know the Tar Heels stay really, really well. Well, uh, got to get that is it time to pay back for what we did. Yeah. We gave up a game uh, early. It's time to you know take that game back and show what we can do. Yeah, get absolutely. That number three team. Yeah. We'll climb our way up in the ACC rankings. So there we go. Well, I tell you what, it has been uh, a lot of fun watching you get back and, and get your rhythm back, and uh, we really appreciate you, your your efforts, and certainly appreciate you uh, coming by and joining us tonight. Thanks appreciate so much you. for the time. Yes, Jalen Ganey, ladies and gentlemen, give him a big round of applause. We appreciate his time stopping by the main table here at Glory Days in Tallahassee. Hey, did you know that reading one text while driving takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds at 55 miles per hour? That's like driving the length of a basketball court with your eyes closed. Put your phone down and set aside all distractions. Don't drive distracted. Arrive alive. Brought to you by the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. When we come back, Coach Hamilton will rejoin us here at our main table and talk about the matchup Saturday with North Carolina coming to town. That's on the way as you're watching on ABC 27 and listening on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach... All right, we're back. One final segment here as uh, Chuck, what was that? What was that trivia question you had? What was the question? What do we got? What do we got here? Let's see what we got. Let's, let's do it quick on the air with Coach Ham. There it is. There you go. Okay, we're going to do, do this on the air here. <laughs> Which Florida State player has uncles who played college football at Georgia Tech and Auburn? Is it Deontay Green, Cam Corrin... Or Jameer Watkins for two tickets to the North Carolina game on Saturday. Do we have an answer? We got somebody raising their hand. Right here, young man. It's not Camp Corin. What about our on the far side? What do we got? We have an answer? It's correct. Jameer Watkins. Nancy, you are the winner. There we go. Jameer Watkins getting it done. Handing out some tickets here at uh, Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. All right, it's time now for our keys to success brought to you by Scott & Wallace, the official law firm of Florida State Athletics. Scott & Wallace with offices in Tallahassee, North Carolina coming in on uh, Saturday, Coach, and I know we're going to be ready to rock, ready to go. We had them down double digits there back on December the 2nd. We got more of our guys back now, and they're certainly a good basketball team, and it should be one heck of a game inside the Tucker Center this weekend. Well, there's no doubt that they've always been a tremendous uh, transition team. Uh, and, and they have that fame Carolina break going on, and, and if you don't get back on defense, so the only way to keep them out of transition is to make the shot so that yeah. they take, take the ball out of bounds. That's not always easier said uh, than done. I mean, easier done than said. Yes, yes. <laughs> Which one is it? I think, it, I think you have both of them. I think you're right both times. It works. I think it works. <laughs> anyway, uh, they're obviously now they're third-ranked team in the country. They're one of the better defensive teams in the country, so we're going to have to execute very well offensively. Um, we got to make sure that we take care of the ball and, and try to not uh, have any unnecessary yeah. turnovers. 
Uh, I think we're going to have to play much better than we did in, in, in Chapel Hill. Uh, they're, they're maturing. They're growing. They got a little more experience. They got some quality depth. Um, and that's why they rank number three in the country, and that's why they're undefeated in the ACC. Yep. How does their guard, R.J. Davis, put pressure on you defensively? Oh, well, well, he's a complete player. I mean, he has the green light. Um, he pushes the ball uh, at a frantic pace, and he shoots well from the perimeter. He plays with a tremendous amount of energy. He's the engine there. You yeah. Know, he's the guy who runs the show, and there's no doubt. Even though Baycock is the, the double-double machine, mm -hmm. Uh, I think he, he's one of the top all-time leading double-double guys in the history of the ACC. Yeah. Now, that's, that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. <laughs> there's, there's a few guys that have, have, have come through the league <laughs> over the, uh, the past few decades uh, overall. You mentioned their defense. The, that, that part of it's gotten better, hasn't yes. it? I mean, yes. they've, they've been known for rebound. You mentioned it, Carolina break, get out and run and really put pressure on you uh, with the way they move it. But defensively, for whatever reason, this year compared to years past, they've kind of taken it to another level and bought in. They have a, a technique where they use their hands an awful lot. Where they, and and the last time I think they might have shot something like what 28 free throws. It was yeah, 28 for 34 that game against us, and we only shot eight. They shot 34 free throws and we shot eight. Now some kind of wrong with that picture. I would think something would be kind of wrong, <laughs> Coach. I'm glad you brought that up. I, that wasn't just me when I was looking at the statue overall. Yeah, that, uh, we need to get that one uh, flipped well, for Like sure. always, though, in the ACC, if you're going to win, you got to be at your best, regardless of whether you're home or on the road, because any team is capable of beating you. Uh, you don't have a night off any time you play an ACC game. 70% of all the games are decided by four points or less, Man. and so it doesn't really matter who you're playing against. It's, it's always a... a, 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 a a street fight, so yeah. to speak, with each game. Primo didn't play in the first one. What does is, what is his presence add with what they try to do defensively with the way he can break defenses down? Well, here again, we're going to play We gonna play what we believe in. Yeah. You know, we're going to execute our offensive game plan. Uh, he fits right in. He gives us quality depth, but a guy who's capable of scoring. Uh, but as a team, we can't rely on one guy. Primo to break. Uh, we need to move, uh, break the pressure with our ball movement, mm -hmm. our cutting, uh, our, uh, our ability to attack the, attack the, put, put pressure on the rim. It, it takes a team effort. It won't be any one particular guy yeah. that, that that can go be the team, the caliber of Carolina. And obviously, our fans oh, can make gosh. a huge difference. You've oh, had great no. games in the Tucker Center. Well, I'm gonna say, I, I cannot be happier with the support we've gotten from our fans. Uh, we, we've had some good runs of, 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 of consecutive winning games at home. Yeah. And a lot of us because of the atmosphere that our fans create in the tub. Yep. Coach, always great seeing you. Thanks so much. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you very much. Hey. Go Nose. There you go. It's a head coach, Leonard Hamilton. My name is Jeff Colhane. We want to see you in the Tucker Center with North Carolina coming to town Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. tip. Have a great night. Go Knowles. You've been watching and listening to Inside Seminole Basketball. Have a great night, everybody.